Well, that's a long way down, isn't it? Hi, I'm Lee Majors. The $6 million man, a former EKU football player, had returned to his home state. And this was the first film in a major city in Kentucky, first time in Lexington. Word got out that one of the movie scenes included an accident. For the final day's filming, George Kennedy is to fall from this building to his death. His fall will be done by Hollywood motion picture stuntman A.J. Baconis. We've been down here now for 16 weeks preparing for this, you and everyone else on the crew, and, and I'd like to thank everybody in Kentucky for their hospitality, for helping us out so much. The doctor assigned to oversee medical attention at the movie set tried to stop it, believing it was just too dangerous. I told the producer, told the director, I told A.J. I didn't think it was a good idea. We already had the movie in the can, so to speak, to use your all's terminology. Bakunas already had jumped on film from the ninth story, but once he heard that a rival stuntman had broken his freefall record at another location, he insisted on a reshoot from the top story, 323 feet. WKYT at that time employed four cameramen, and all four were assigned to shoot the jump. If there's going to be somebody taking a dive off a top floor into downtown Lexington, that's a news story. You only get one chance. And you have to really, really, really make sure that you have got everything just the way it needs to be. The cameras rolled and Bakunas jumped. Blanton says almost immediately he could tell something was wrong. When he hit, the ground shook beneath my feet. Chockley couldn't be there at the time. He was working the emergency room at Good Samaritan Hospital. But he had one of the paramedics relaying play-by-play -play on a walkie-talkie. They initially said that he had, you know, that everything was okay. And then there was kind of an, oh my gosh, moment when they realized that the airbag had ruptured. Traveling at a speed of about 115 feet per second, Bakunas had crashed through it. Incredibly, he was alive, but critically injured. At the hospital, Chockley and other doctors frantically worked to save his life. Just really suffice it to say that he's really in critical condition. But when he initially presented to the emergency room, he grabbed my arm with a look of desperation. He, he grasped me really hard. He was a strong guy. And it was a very dramatic thing. But you can see in his eyes the fear and the fact that he recognized me and he was looking to me to help him. Bakunas' head and other organs were intact, but his lungs were too badly damaged. He died the next day. Mr. Bakunas died at 9.45 a.m. this morning. His lungs had been very hurt by the fall, and that ultimately led to his demise because he had so much pulmonary damage. The excitement that had gripped the town gave way to sadness. People who never knew A.J. Bakunas still seemed to feel the loss. The city took a real and personal interest in it, and, and there was definite sadness when the accident happened. What was going to be a glorious moment suddenly became a, a horrific event. I'm still disappointed in myself that I couldn't have done more to prevent the jump. I'm always disappointed in myself when things turn out badly. The tragedy was rendered all the more chilling by the comment delivered by Lee Majors following his interview with Bakunas just before the jump. Now go on back and keep preparing because I want to keep you around. Well, it should be exciting, but uh, one thing I'd like to know, are world records worth the risk? It's obvious to A.J. Bakunas that it is. We'll see.